Good morning, good afternoon, <clears throat> and good evening. I'm Larry Fink, and I'm speaking to all of you from New York. My guest today is Masayosu San, who's speaking to all of you from Tokyo. And both of us are thrilled we're not in Davos today, that we're home. <clears throat> but what, what is amazing today, we are speaking like we are in Davos. We're having this session like we are in Davos. So part of our conversation today is about talking about technology and how technology is, ch is changing our lives, changing our lives for the better. And this is a great example of how that technology is changing our life for the better. Uh, so let me begin and say, Masa, my friend, my partner, my almost, uh, you know, we're, we're both like twins. We're both chairman, founders, and CEOs. So uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm sorry I'm not with you. I, 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 I regret we don't have wine together. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Larry, you're amazing. You're great. So, Masa, why don't we get started? Because we only have 30 minutes today. Um, can we, can we get your, your perspective of 2020? Um, the pandemic is still with us. In many ways, we're learning about new strains of the virus. So certainly there's more uncertainty than ever before. Tell, tell the audience, how are you feeling today? Are you optimistic? What do you think is going to happen in 2021? Yeah, well, I, I'm optimistic in the long run. The vaccines and the antibodies uh, for medical antibodies, they're all coming to uh, distributing to many of the people. So in the long run, I'm optimistic. Once it's over, it's over. And people will say, wow, the sky is blue again. But in the short run, uh, I'm very pessimistic. Uh, still many lives are in danger and people are dying every day around the world. And many countries started vaccination, but even countries like Japan, we haven't even got uh, anybody vaccinated yet. Uh, so uh, it's going to take some time for majority of the people get vaccinated. Uh, I'm, I'm very worried still in the short run. But the pandemic has shown that parts of our lives, and certainly technology, it's accelerated. We've seen a profound change in global economies, how we work, how we live, how we are educated, how we are uh, applying medicine. Um, can you describe to the audience, where do you observe the biggest trans transformations and and from your perspective, the role of technology. Yeah, well, transformation is, I think, drastically getting uh, accelerated. The, as you say, the I am in, in investor in investing into many companies which is utilizing AI to disrupt uh, all kinds of industries, and I'm I'm very excited to see all these uh, entrepreneurs bringing this new technology uh, tools and the platform to change people's uh, lifestyle and education, medicine, uh, the way we work and so on, exactly as you said. But this is drastically being uh, accelerated uh, because we cannot touch and feel as, as we were doing in the past. Uh, we have to use our brain more uh, but actually, it's it's in tragedy, tragedy. It's a disastrous uh, situation. But technology-wise, it's evolving quicker. And what technologies are evolving quicker? And where do you see technology changing us tomorrow and all of throughout the you know the coming years? Yes. Um, Look, you know, the uh, as we are doing just a video conference right now, uh, the this video conferencing became, uh, you know, necessary too. I'm doing the uh, Zoom kind of video conferencing, you know, five, six, ten times a day, and meeting with people and the companies. Uh, um, 
from all over the world. Uh, I don't have to travel uh, to overseas. Uh, so it's actually uh, efficiency is has gotten even more efficient and uh, uh, we can share the uh, desktop we can we can uh, uh, see the face to face uh, as if we we are actually in the same room uh, so the way we work is drastically changed uh, i'm seeing many uh, ed tech company using ai the children's and uh, uh, teachers are meeting uh, over the over the internet you know through the video and ai is uh, checking the performance of every student and the teachers. Uh, so efficiency, again, is drastically there. Drug discovery is uh, uh, drastically uh, accelerated using power of AI. The new drug discovery getting uh, much more advanced. And even the COVID uh, uh, medicines, uh, AI is utilized uh, everywhere. And uh, uh, so acceleration is big, big time coming there. And uh, um, autonomous driving is uh, uh, coming into, you know, much more acceleration. And uh, even for the autonomous driving, the uh, AI-based uh, simulations uh, is actually functioning very strong. Um, the FinTech is also <coughs> big. So I, I checked, there are 510 unicorns uh, right now, over $1 billion around the world. Half of that is from US. Half of half is from China. And the remaining is all the rest. The valuation wise, it's uh, $510 billion. And half of that, again, uh, from uh, US, but two thirds of the remaining half is from China, okay? And uh, uh, I'm sad to say only one company from Japan. Uh, so, you know, the uh, AI, AI is utilized only in uh, actually uh, half, half of 500 company using AI as a tool to disrupt uh, every industry. <clears throat> So, uh, uh, of course, still the U.S. is by far the biggest in the force, uh, but China is also growing very quickly in every segment of the industry. And, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, many young uh, really disrupting uh, the traditional industry. It's a very exciting movement. But I would say some of this is not just a disruption. I would say some of this is our miracles. Yes. Uh, when you think about the miracles of, as you suggested, 12 Zoom calls a day, imagine if we had this pandemic six years ago. We did not have the technology to do this. Think right. about how we are able to do our work and how we're able to uh, live our lives in this remote world today as we are trying to stay healthy. Um, I look at this as a miracle and are there any other miracles that we're not aware of, Masa, that you see that's going to, you know, really shape our world? I mean, you talk about AI, but I love yeah. this fact that we we spend a lot of time talking about disruption that technology is doing, and I look at it from this from the lens of miracles and advancements and improvement of society and advancements and improvement of how we live and 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 these are all really important things, and I do believe. Most of society in this pandemic have been able to cope and live and work. Obviously, there is a lot of inequalities, a lot of issues. But let's be clear, if we did not have this technology, we did not have this innovation, this entrepreneurship, we would be in far worse shape globally uh, today. So I give you one example, okay? So uh, uh, you as an investor, you look at uh, um, you know so many great companies. Ten years ago, uh, the GAFA, was not in the top 10 of the list of the market cap in the world. So today, eight of them are in the top 10, okay? The eight of the internet companies, they are in the top 10. So what did the internet uh, uh, disrupt or, you know, how do they uh, get their position today? 
internet totally changed the uh, media and advertisement. It's an advertisement business. Advertisement business is 1% of GDP. One more big industry that the internet disrupt is the retail industry. That is like 10%, 12%, depending on the countries. Uh, so 1% and 10%, that's the two industries that internet has disrupted. 15% of the GDP is actually logistics in China. 11% of the GDP is uh, uh, logistics in the US, okay? 11% in the US, 15 in China is logistics. So people still, people still doubt the power of a fully uh, autonomous vehicle, but mass production of autonomous vehicles is happening in two years. Two years? Zero, two years. Mass production, it's no longer just a test. Licensed mass production of the vehicle with no driving wheel. No driving wheel. That is starting in two years. And of course, in the first year, it's not millions of units, but mass production starting having, happen, happening in two years. And you know, uh, several years after that, the cost per mileage by fully autonomous driving become cheaper than the car the consumer owns. So how many people need car in their home that you drive by yourself? Instead, you can call, instead of calling taxi and so on, you can call autonomous car from your smartphone. Okay, just one tap, and then autonomous car come and pick you up and bring you there. Cheaper than you own your own car. You don't have to have a, a, a you know the a, a car insurance. You don't have to have a garage. You don't have to go look for a parking lot when you go shopping or you know office or uh, any place. So it's much easier. So and the. For the logistics, it's actually people people spending five dollars for shipping goods delivered to to your home. That five dollar in the developed countries that become fifty cents. So, you know, several years after the mass production start, which is this decade, okay, and the logistics cost become one tenth. Then the 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 whole industry change. So it's, it's so much cheaper to get products shipped to your home or office. Much quicker, much cheaper, much more availability and uh, no hassle, right? So why did uh, people pay so much rent in a dense uh, metropolitan? Because it was more convenient to go there. But why do you need, you know, a, a, a very expensive real estate to bring the traffic of pedestrian, uh, you know, uh, and who, who actually get out of the uh, traffic jam? And instead, you can you can get all those things much much cheaper. Okay, so logistics industry, the transportation industry, drastically have a change. So automobile today, it has a hundred years history. That was the one of the biggest industry in, in, in the mankind. But before uh, automobile, there were 3000 years of history using horse as, right. a, pow as a power of transportation, 3000 years. So 3000 years of horse power based transportation became 100 years of driving the automobile with the gas. Now, that is going to change to driverless vehicle. I call this miracle. I call this miracle. The AI is driving for you. 
it's a it's a vehicle with a supercomputer. So it's like a smartphone is like a supercomputer of 10 years, 20 years ago. So it has the, that kind of power. The automobile become a real supercomputer with four wheel. That and in the uh, super inside the supercomputer vehicle, you can you can continue to enjoy your work or entertainment without worrying about traffic jam or you know accident. There will be no more accident. It will be much safer than human driving. And uh, because it's so smart and communicate each other, traffic jam is gonna go away. No, like here today, in, in only in 100 years, uh, the horse is not allowed in highway. Horse is not allowed in most of the city road. Horse is allowed in in just a hobby uh, ho horse ride park. Now, human driver's car would be prohibited to be driving in the highway or you know metropolitan in my view, in in next 50 years, because human caused the accident, right? So I think uh, a drastic change is going to happen to the way we live, the way we commute, the way we, you know, interact. The uh, semiconductor companies, uh, I talked to the key, um, you know, CEOs and the technologists, they're all saying, Next biggest, uh, uh, you know, their pioneering thing is uh, not the smartphone anymore. It's too simple. It's a, it's an autonomous car. That's the supercomputer, right? So that's where the the semiconductors technology goes. I think that would be the biggest industry. Uh, it's going to be a truly miracle, right? And uh, of course, the drug <coughs> this uh, using power of AI, the gene editing. Okay, uh, genome editing to cure your future disease before you, you, you even notice. <clears throat> so the future uh, disease you can predict and do the editing of your, you know, miscopy uh, genome in, in, in your string. And uh, uh, for today's body, uh, proteome, um, you know, uh, study, is uh, now again giving the solutions. None of these were available five years, ten years ago. Only right, right. coming, and uh, in the next ten years, <clears throat> it's very, very popular. It become new common sense. How do we get to that other side, though? I mean, the miracles that you're talking about is also, as you said, very disruptive. Um, yes. And and. How do we create a more just future then? Because we have millions of jobs of transportation people who are work driving cars and trucks and other forms of vehicles. We have um, we have all these different transformations that will ultimately become the miracles, as you suggested. But what do you suggest for? governments and countries to do in terms of moving forward in terms of making sure that we move fast and forward because these are miracles. At the same time, we need to do this in a way that we're not creating um, a, a societies that uh, are more unequal. And yeah. that yeah. to me is one of the big missing ingredients when we talk about technology, because the speed in which technology is changing, we're seeing evidence that humans in many parts of humanity can't adapt as fast. How do we navigate that, Masa? I think people have to adapt. The technology evolution cannot be stopped or slowed down. It's happening anyway. The yes. discovery happening of the new technology everywhere, every day. So we cannot stop it. We have to adapt. We have to educate ourselves. We have to learn. We have to adapt. The human have to adapt. So uh, there was a, a time, as I said, where horse was the main power of transportation and there were lots of jobs uh, millions of people's jobs uh, taking care of horses and and, and so on Th those jobs are gone okay but people always find a new job so the uh, unhuman like job 
where you have lots of danger, dirty, and tire, tiring job will be replaced by silver color, okay? So there's a white color and blue color, and there's a new color, I call it silver color. It's a robot with AI. That's going to come to replace many of the blue color job, but many of the blue color job, are we doing this blue color, you know, dangerous or dirty job because it's a joyful thing? No, it's because you have to earn the uh, wage. Uh, that was the main reason. But if you had the silver color taking care of those dangerous or dirty jobs, then human <clears throat> can do, choose to do more human-like job, yes. like, like communicating with the other human, listening and discussing and, you know, a, a handmade handmade uh, uh, parts or uh, painting or, you know, ha having class of uh, entertainment, you know, all those human to human uh, become a more exciting job for human and it become more valuable job. Maybe one day we'll have technology and AI to replace CEOs, Masa, and, and we can take those classes together. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we all anyway. Have <laughs> um, you know, th earlier this week, I, I, I wrote about climate change, Masa, and you're a better expert than I am by, by a lot related to technology. For us to get to a zero carbon uh, future, it is estimated we have to spend $50 trillion on new technologies. Uh, to, you know, you're talking about some of that related to uh, driverless cars, electric cars, but do you see technology... Uh, and are you investing in technologies uh, that create an acceleration towards a net zero carbon world? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I've been investing and creating a lot of solar park, you know, uh, uh, gigawatts uh, solar power uh, plants. And uh, in, in the countries where lots of sunshine, it actually became the cheapest so a uh, way of creating uh, electricity. Usually uh, people calculate and do the 25 years finance, but actually the panel keep on producing, uh, generating electricity for 80, 80 years. So after you recoup and make money in 25 years, you know, project finance, the remaining, you know, 50 years, 60 years, uh, become free of cost because you have already recouped. There's no cost of material. It's just a sunshine. And uh, uh, silicon stays, uh, you know, uh, very good. And the glass uh, covering that is actually stayed, you know, 100 years. So as long as you keep on cleaning it, uh, sunshine is available. So uh, in the long run, I think electricity cost become very, uh, inexpensive and renewable and clean. So the power of wind and the sunshine, they are uh, a renewable energy that's good to live together on the earth. Uh, and of course, uh, additional new technology being developed. But those two uh, basic uh, renewable is becoming very, very low cost. And the only thing you need is the grid, uh, the big, uh, inter-country um, uh, grid, if they are connected each other, then somewhere there is always sunshine. Somewhere there is always a wind blowing. So all you need is the gigantic uh, uh, giga power, uh, uh, you know, uh, power cable uh, connecting each other as a grid. That is Master, do, you, do you see the cables uh, having transforming technology to reduce the latent, you know, to right now, the transmission of electricity degrades over, over distance. And so is there a technology that you're aware of that is being developed to improve the latency? Yes, hyperpower grid actually uh, reduce only 2.5% across thousands of kilometers, Th thousands of kilometers, miles, thousands of miles, only 2.5% uh, 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 re reduction in uh, 
uh, transmission. So it's only if you transmit from uh, 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 AC to DC, DC to AC back again, then you have the loss of uh, uh, efficiency. Right. But you generate in DC and transmit in DC and then uh, uh, use it in DC. So for example, the, uh, the power generation by solar is DC. Right, and then trans DC uh, trans hyperpower transition transmission line, and then DC consumption by let's say crowd data center. You don't need AC, so DC to DC to DC actually you only reduce decrease uh, two point five percent, not fifty percent. Right. right. So that I'll kind say, of happening. Good. I want to change the topic so we only have a few minutes more. You, you spoke about 75% of all the unicorns are in the United States and China, and you said only one in Japan. Uh, SoftBank is investing in South America now, in Korea, in, in, in Southeast Asia. Wh where do you see the next hubs of innovation coming? Is it going to remain in the two major countries, or are you starting to see more and more innovation elsewhere? Is the world becoming awakened to this? We haven't talked about India or even parts of Europe. Is the world awakening to this phenomenon or, or do you see the dominance of the United States and China persisting in the future? The US and China still do, uh, dominant because 80% of the patents of AI is still coming from those two countries. So as I said, 50% US, Two uh, variation wise, two thirds of the remaining is from China. Okay, the number of company wise, uh, twenty five percent is China. Okay, half of half is China, and ha the total half is U.S. But the eighty percent is patent is from those two countries. Uh, depending on how you count, could be ninety percent uh, if you count the more important AI patents. So. Could it be the same in the future? I think so. For the next uh, 20 years, uh, it's, it's even even more getting concentrated. So Japan is one, India is eight. So India has more AI-based unicorns than Japan. That's sad. I'm so sad for <laughs> Japanese uh, uh, society. The government have to rethink. Japanese government have to rethink. Japan is still number three in GDP in the world. And this is, this is not acceptable for the future of Japan. But anyway, US still is the center of the innovation. China is for patent, AI-based patent, US and China is now half and half. So the future technology is actually more getting accelerated in China. So we, 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 could, we should continue to look for the new innovations in the same places. We don't have to look elsewhere. Those two countries are the center of innovation. Masa, we have only two minutes left. Is there anything else that you wanted to tell the audience? Yeah, I say, some people say they're worried about uh, AI. Is AI good for humanity or not? I said definitely good for humanity. AI is helping people's life you know, AI is helping uh, the no, no more traffic accident. AI is helping people get connected each other. AI is helping many other way that, you know, from saving from disaster, even the world climate uh, change, the AI is helping. So I think if, as long as we use the power of AI for the good for the humanity, which I believe majority of people are using for that purpose. This is good thing for humanity. Well, we're out of time. Once again, I, I learned about two or three things from Masa. Hopefully all of you have learned something. <clears throat> Masa-san has proven over his, his time from Berkeley to uh, creating SoftBank, uh, changing the world for the better. I think sometimes people thought Masa was, was a little um, out of there, and yet it, it, he has time and time again has proven 
to be a man of, uh, of, of great understanding of where the world's going. So I'm proud to say that you are a friend and a, a mentor. So uh, everyone, please still stay safe and healthy and and get that vaccination when you can. And hopefully Japan will have vaccinations and Masa, when it's uh, your turn that you'll have your vaccination. Thank you very much. Yeah, wish uh, you know, your health and happiness for all of you. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you.